So Nizar, I, I, most of the data that we've generated uh, over the last almost decade has been primarily been in clear cell RCC. Randomized trials have been clear cell RCC, but we're all seeing the non-clear cell histologies, the chromophobes, those with sarcomatoid features that, that dominate, uh, collecting duct carcinoma, papillary type 1 and type 2. What, what's the policy and what's the practice at MD Anderson to approach the non-clear cell histologies with the agents that are available? Uh, Bob, the, uh, those patients with non-clear cell, uh, with metastasis, uh, uh, constitute about 10% of all patients with advanced uh, RCC. And uh, you're right, the uh, data that's been generated with the target agents has been uh, in clear cell RCC, except for the phase 3 trial with temsorolimus versus interferon, where 20% of the patients on that study had non-clear cell histologies. But that was for uh, a group of patients with poor risk features. And we're talking about how we treat our patients with uh, RCC when we see them in the clinic. And I think the two important uh, considerations for us when we see those patients is first, histology, as you mentioned, are we dealing with a clear cell, the most common type, or are we dealing with a variant histology? The second point, uh, or the second factor we, we take into consideration is the prognostic uh, variables, prognostic factors, because RCC, as we all know, is a heterogeneous disease. Uh, histologically, but also clinically, even in the same histological group, there are patients with clear cell histology who have uh, poor risk factors, and therefore they should be treated uh, differently, in my opinion. So when uh, dealing with a non-clear cell uh, variant histology, uh, the uh, FDA-approved agents, so Nitinib you mentioned, uh, in our experience has not been as effective as uh, the data uh, clearly showed in our clear cell RCC. So we published in European Urology last year a, a single arm study with sunitinib uh, in patients with advanced non-clear cell histologies. And uh, our findings were uh, surprising uh, in that the uh, response rate was only 5% and the median progression-free survival for this uh, group of patients with variant histology was 2.7 months. So this is clearly uh, uh, lower than what we, we expect to see with uh, clear cell RCC. Obviously, uh, this was a single arm study. Uh, in some of these patients uh, may have had uh, poor risk features, and we know that these agents may not work uh, as effectively in the poor risk histology. There are two trials now that are uh, uh, completing accrual. Actually, one of them, the Aspen trial led by Duke, and then we can speak to that. Uh, the Aspen trial basically uh, looked at treating patients with non clear cell histologies with sunitinib versus everolimus. And we uh, conducted the, we're conducting the same trial uh, with the same design, basically looking at these two agents. And the results of these two trials will be very important, uh, but they will probably be not available for some time. So, Dan, you know, when you think about when you design the Aspen trial, now the trial is, is reaching maturity and we'll hopefully see results in the, in the future. Um, how's that influencing how you're, you're treating patients and how you're thinking about this disease? Because I think we've all had the experience that, that the non-clear cell histologies, the agents that we have, there's a huge unmet medical need. We have to try and figure out what's the right way to take care of them. Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, I mean, we, and I think you, you mentioned it earlier, I mean, this is an area where uh, there's a wide variation in, in the natural history of these patients. And this is a relatively rare phenomena, you know, 10, 15% of our metastatic patients with these sort of non-clear cell uh, histologies. Uh, but, but they're out there. They're out there in the community. They're out there in our practice. And we need some prospective clinical data to really uh, educate us around how to manage that. And so what we did was to take the two agents that we thought kind of best exemplified the classes of VEGF, TKI, uh, and, and mTOR at the time, so Everolimus and uh, Sunitinib, and uh, we randomized patients one-to-one -to, -one to those two agents. Uh, and these are patients with non-clear cell histologies, uh, largely chromophobe, um, papillary, and unclassified. And we, we stratified according to, to papillary so that they'd be even in both cases. And uh, 108 patients, we're gonna be looking at their uh, progression-free survival rates. And importantly, we'll be looking at a number of correlative studies. We collected tumor blocks in all these patients. So as some of the you know, technologies around uh, gene sequencing and uh, other nuances and subsets of, of these um, non-clear cell types kind of emerge, we'll be able to look at that in the context 
of, uh, of treatment outcome related to these two therapies. And we hope one of these can become the standard of care so that as we develop new agents that may be more appropriately targeted, say, to papillary ki uh, kidney cancer, we've got some historical data with a VEGF inhibitor or an mTOR inhibitor to compare to. So, M Monty, I mean, one of the things that I'm sure community physicians have to deal with is, is, is there a role for chemotherapy either alone in com or in combination with a targeted agent in any population of patients with, with metastatic kidney cancer. So for example, if a person came in with a, a non-clear cell histology or even a clear cell histology that had 50% or more sarcomatoid features, do you start to think about using chemotherapy in that setting or do you reserve that for you know, down the road? It's a very complex question, uh, but certainly there is some data to support chemotherapy in that setting. Uh, ECOG 8802 is a small phase two study that looked at the regimen of adriamycin and gemcitabine in combination, and it suggested modest response rates on the order of around 15%. Uh, with that regimen in patients with sarcomatoid features. We don't have a good sense from that study about the proportion of sarcomatoid features those patients possess, but I think that's a per perfectly reasonable first-line approach. To date, what we have is largely retrospective data that documents the effects of TKIs uh, primarily and sarcomatoid disease, and the data there seems to be somewhat balanced. So yeah, in I mean, my mind, still some equipoise. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that, that again, I, I think that as and these are talked, I mean, this is really an area where we've not done as good a job as we need to do to educate our colleagues about what the appropriate per approach is because so much emphasis has been on the 75% plus that have clear cell histology.